Is. Robin Slim Show. Hey, it's Mark Jaffe. Hey, Mark Jaffe. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good, good. You are uh, a former senior executive uh, for the Walt Disney Company and uh, now an author? Yeah, believe it or not. That's cool. What? Um, How long did you work for Disney? Well, I went to Disney for uh, five years in the 1990s and was responsible for the Lion King soundtrack, Beauty and the Beast, Little Mermaid, Aladdin. Wow. You probably remember those from way back when. And those were great. Aladdin, that movie was awesome. Yeah. I know. I know. What are they doing now with all the live action movies? I, I liked, um, I liked, uh, I don't know, did they do that one with, uh, uh, what's it, uh, the, the Huntsman? That one, oh, is that Snow White? Or? Snow White, yeah. I, I saw the Disney. first one of that. That was really good. And, but, and Maleficent, well, I wanted to one, see. Wait, the first one came out in the 30s. You guys seem much younger than that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, but the, the live action one that was from oh, a right. couple years ago. Like, But now they're doing, like, are they doing all their movies like that now? Because now they have... Um, uh, Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, and yeah. I heard them announce, um, a, actually, a Lion King live action movie. Yeah, I, that's what I heard, too. I haven't really been there for in some time, but they also, as you know, acquired other other animation companies. So they have their own animation company. They have other ones that they're working with as well. And, yeah. you know, they did some incredible stuff recently, like Frozen and, and some of the, the other great movies that they've come out with. Yeah, my friend Donnie loves that movie, Frozen. He he said he, he watches it, like, even just to fall asleep, he'll just put that movie on. Like, if he's at the end of the day, he just he loves that movie. <laughs> Well, I don't know if the producers would like to hear him help him fall asleep, but he doesn't have to work. <laughs> he watches it. He watches it like two day, two thousand day. But um, uh, did you work with Michael Eisner? Yeah, absolutely. Michael Eisner, Jeffrey Katzenberg, Frank Wells. I mean, it was just an amazing, amazing time at the Walt Disney Company back then. That is, uh, yeah, that was like the golden age back then. I mean, they've I always been, them. they've always been great, but that was a really good, a really good time for for them. Oh, yeah. I mean, there was just such creative juices going around that company, and it was just everybody was just so excited and were creating and putting together happiness for so many people all over the world. It was really a heady time for me. What, uh, why, why did you leave there? Well, you know, sometimes things happen. You know, politics happen. I left there and went to Warner Brothers and uh, then spent some time at Capital EMI and at DreamWorks, where I was responsible for the Prince of Egypt. But, you know, the music business had always been my dream, and I just decided to go for it and make it happen. And I was fortunate enough to start my career at A&M Records, where I discovered this performer named Rafi, who you may have heard of. I don't know. Uh, yeah, is I don't he, know, is yeah. he a, a new artist? Yeah, he was actually a, a live human being who was a troubadour for kids, and <laughs> You know, we wound up selling, you know, over uh, half a million copies of some of his biggest oh, albums. Oh, Rafi, and... yes, yes. Oh, you're going to start singing some of the songs? <laughs> no, but now I know who you're talking about. Like, yeah, I, <laughs> at first it didn't ring a bell, but yes, I know. I know who that is. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> well, if you had a two or three or four year old kid, there's no way you wouldn't know who that is. Yeah, and, and it's funny because I go to I go to meet people and I tell them I did Raffi and they either love me or they want to kick <laughs> me out of the room because they're still singing the song because oh. their kids kept singing it. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you still do? Uh, music? No, so. Yeah, so now, you know, during the day, um, I, uh, I work on consulting and growing revenues for uh, companies and, and making them more money. And my passion really is creating happiness. And that's what led me to write this book. I, I wanted to create, you know, this legacy of happiness for my kids. And I wanted to tell them, like, how I've been able to lead this incredibly happy life. But I don't know if you have kids, but you can't just look, like say, "Hey, how about if we go out for a drink and I'll tell you how to be happy?" You're not going to get the best <laughs> response. And so I decided to write this book, and it became my legacy to them. It's called the Suitcase of Happiness, and it's it's spelled with a a Y, right? Happiness, H A P P Y. And -E yeah, you know, I I mean, you ask a hundred people what their definition of happiness is, and you'll get a different uh, explanation every time. And I actually agree with kind of the definition that the Supreme Court came up when they couldn't figure out what pornography was. They decided they were going to define pornography by saying, I know it when I see it. 
And I think the same thing applies to happiness. I mean, my cocktail of happiness is probably different from yours and it's different from Slim's. And we all have what we think is happiness. But right. most people think they're brief, fleeting moments. And the reason that I spell it with a Y is because I believe we can all achieve an enduring state of happiness that is our go-to state from the moment we wake up till the moment we go to bed. Cool. Yeah, I heard, I heard that it is explained in the book why it's spelled that way. That's cool. Um, is the story, um, is it your, like your, your life story? You know, in many ways it is. I mean, I, I have found that uh, happiness doesn't come to those who are passively waiting. You need to go and find it. And everyone says, well, how do I find happiness? And, you know, I, I go back to the story of this, my best friend and I, we went on this trip to Oregon and normally we just go find a spot on the map and we just pick a pickup truck and a, and a case of beer and we just go out exploring. And we're in this Oregon town, which has brilliant sunlight after all this rain. And if you guys know, after a lot of rain or after a really cold series of days, once there's a warm day and you're walking in the street, all of a sudden, I don't know where all the beautiful women came from, but they are all out. And hormones <laughs> are flying and everybody is just happy and, and thrilled. And so we're walking down the street and it's like a parade of models. There are just gorgeous girls walking towards us. And after, like, the last two walk by, I mean, I'm just overwhelmed by the whole thing. And I look at my buddy and I said, did you see that? And he said, oh, yeah, it's amazing how they weather the corrosive elements of the seaside environment. I'm like, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, I have used many words in my life to describe women, and none of those were ever included. <laughs> and, he, <laughs> and he says, I... I got to go in for a closer look, and I'm up, and I, I'm thinking this is going to be a recipe for disaster. This is you know? yeah, so not well. <laughs> I'm about I'm about to grab him, and I realize he's not heading towards the women. He is heading towards the houses that are fronting the ocean. And as he gets closer, he's looking at the shingle, and it occurs to me. The guy is building a house on the beach. He wasn't looking at the women. He was looking at shingles on a house. <laughs> you focus on, you find. That was what he. I'm focusing on <laughs> girls because I'm not crazy. It's an incredible day and they're gorgeous. <laughs> he's focused on shingles. <laughs> he's building a house. Right, that's what's on his mind at the moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was gonna have you. So, oh. Sorry, Mark. I mean, the same thing is true for happiness, right? If you wake up in the morning and all you're thinking about is, God, I hate my job. My boss is such a jerk. The people in my office, I can't stand them. Well, guess what? You're going to be very unhappy that day. But if what you're thinking when you wake up is, oh, my God, I get to see my girlfriend tonight. It's going to be a great day. I got this fun lunch planned. There's a little project that I really enjoy doing. You're going to have a really happy day. What you focus on, you find. Right. That's cool. I, I was thinking too. I, I saw in a store recently. I, I've seen, you know, you see parents just yelling at their kids, and it's like, do you even enjoy their company? Like, can you be that miserable? But I, anytime I see a, a parent, like, uh, genuinely having a great time with their kid, and that that always makes me happy. That's a really cool like moment to see, like people just enjoying each other's company. Oh, I agree with you so much. And There's a chapter in my book about play. And, you know, how people really, many people just don't know how to play. And I remember this one time I was in Costco and I'm taking my three-year-old son around and we're on the cart. And all of a sudden I think, how cool would it be to make this cart into a race car, right? So now I am running down these aisles in Costco. I'm almost knocking people over. We're racing around the corners and we're pretending that we're winning. And, you know, it's just the best time. And so... We go to the checkout line, and this older woman walks up to me, and I look in her eye, and I think, I'm in a lot of trouble. And she looks at me and says, I saw you and your son in those aisles in Costco. And I'm thinking, it's all over. I could have knocked her over. I could have hurt her. I'm such an irresponsible adult. And she then actually tears started to come out of her eye, and she said, I remember what it was like to play with my children, and it gave me so much joy to watch you. That's awesome. Oh, that's and I'm like, cool. she gets it. <laughs> she can play, right? That, yeah, that's awesome. I mean, yeah, every now and then I'll have to yell at my kids because they're getting crazy. But yeah, I don't like, I don't like to uh, 
you know, spend time doing that. I'd rather, I'd much rather have a great time with them. And when you think about it, play is so interesting because the purpose of play is simply the enjoyment of play. You have no other reason to play than to enjoy yourself. And the more you enjoy yourself, the more you want to play. And it's like one of the best ways and the easiest ways to find happiness is to just play. That's true. Mm-hmm. That's really true. Even cats and dogs understand that. Yeah, yeah that's, that's uh, yeah, that's no, a primal. No doubt about it. A primal <laughs> instinct. Um, I was going to ask you too. Have you ever had to cut someone out of your life because they've been so negative, like they just, you know, kept every situation was like, you know, was the end of the world type of thing. Yeah, I think there. I mean, what, it's the same thing. I mean, there are people that you don't want in your life because they're just an energy drain. They just take that energy away from you. Because you can't really control what happens to you. So if that person's in your presence, you can't really control what they do, but you can control how you respond to it. And and that not only applies to people that are an energy drain and they're just a downer, but it applies to anything that happens. I mean, life is pretty complicated. Not everything goes our way, whether they're people that enter our lives or they're circumstances that enter our lives or comments that people make or actions that people take. We can't control that, but what we can control is our response to it. And that's how we could continue to endeavor to have happiness, is to control our response to those things and accept the fact that unpleasant and unhappy things are part of life. And so, therefore, we can continue to engage in a happy life and also experience those things that make us unhappy. And that's kind of the way that you're able to surround yourself with happiness and concurrently at the same time accept the things that make you unhappy. I mean, for example, you guys always have this best time on the show. I can't imagine that at 6.30 Eastern time, something bad didn't happen to one of you at some point while doing this. Well, you're not taking that into the moment in your show. That unpleasant thing is still in your head. It's still in your life. Mm -hmm. But you two are having the best time ever just a half hour later at 7 o'clock. Because happiness and unhappiness can exist together at the same time. That's awesome. Because, yeah, that, that's so true. There's been so many times something could happen, like, right before whatever. Yep. And, yeah, you just got to just gotta go on and, and there, just do it. There's also been times where <laughs> I've just been depressed for, like, a whole week. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to do the show because I'm depressed. And then I do the show and I forget it all. And I'm just, like, in the moment. And, yeah. Well, you know why? Because it's part of these four laws of focus. So what you focus on, you find. What you find grows and becomes real. And then you become what you focus on. So by 10 o'clock, after you've had all these gaps and you've been laughing and having a great time, you've been, in essence, focusing on creating happiness for you and your listeners. And by 10 o'clock, I guarantee you, no matter what happened and no matter what your depression is, you're truly happy at that moment. Because you've focused on it, you've found it, and it became who you are, at least for those three hours. And then the challenge is, how do you then go on to the rest of your day and continue in that happy state? Mm -hmm. What do you do um, in your own life, Mark? To, to like, what what are some of your hobbies? Well, I'm a I'm a big runner, and um, and also I just love adventure in the outdoors. I mean, I'm I'm the guy who always takes the road not taken. I'm the one who's always exploring and, and discovering new adventures. I mean, I was I was one time going to this lecture on. I know this is kind of nutty, but it's on how all of this technology has robbed us of the ability to engage in deeper in-person conversations. And on the way to this lecture, I'm in this downtown LA park and I, and, and I took the Metro to get there. I mean, no one in LA takes the subway. Everyone thinks I'm a nut job to do it, but I think it's great to kind of, you know, to kind of be there with the people, you know, and kind of press the class a little bit. I mean, that we're all human beings. It's great to be in the company of other folks, even if they're not like me, who cares? So I'm in this park, and it's dark out, and L.A. built this great park downtown called Grant Park, and it has these fountains that, you know, in the summertime you could walk into, and, you know, they're spraying water all over, and they have a couple of inches of water underneath them. And I'm walking down this park, I'm with my girlfriend, and we see this guy in an electric wheelchair in this fountain filled with water doing figure eights around all the different things that are spraying the water up in the air. And I'm thinking, this is amazing. And she said, well, you know, we got to get to the lecture. And I'm like, no, we got to talk to this guy. So I go down, I meet this guy. I said, I can't help but admiring the fact that you are doing 
cigarettes in the middle of this big fountain. And he said, I just want to be happy. And I made that decision two years ago. I legally changed my name to Happy H. Happy. And he goes, <laughs> I'm, I'm not making this up. I mean, I, I, I published on Twitter a picture of this guy. That's and awesome. he said, uh, he said, you know what? Look at me. I'm homeless. I'm disabled. There's, my life has been a series of accidents and problems and issues and, and nothing going my way. Wow. And I said, enough with that. I'm just going to be happy. And so for me, the ultimate irony is this guy was having an incredible time mm. in a way that my girlfriend and I could not because yeah. it was cold out. And we're not going to go into five inches of water and walk around. <laughs> But because he was in an electric wheelchair, he could. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Are you also a motivational speaker, Mark? Uh, I am. I've given a number of talks. As a matter of fact, there is a, one of the biggest yoga and wellness companies in the world called Wanderlust uh, engaged me for three months to give a series of workshops on happiness. But I love talking to, to groups. I just gave a, a talk to a group of senior citizens, uh, literally, who need happiness as much as anyone else, uh, just last month. And it, and it was amazing because at the conclusion of that one, all these women came up to me and started disclosing these incredibly personal things that they had gone through in their life and how something that I said touched on that memory and brought it back. And it's just so rewarding. I mean, I, I get direct mails on my Twitter feed, which is at Mark Jaffe, from people like one guy two days ago said that he had this debilitating illness, and he said it was so hard for him to make it through a night until he got to my Twitter feed and read the words and looked at the pictures, and it calmed him down and gave him hope, and he fell asleep. I was smiling you know, and, uh, looking at your pictures. You have one with your son, and you just both, you both look like exactly like you're enjoying each other. You're having a great time. It's just a great picture. I think it said, uh, what did it say? The, the, the best thing you can give somebody is, is your time or, or something like that? Yeah, the, it said the most valuable thing you can give your children is your time. Yeah. But, and if you look closely at that picture, my daughter is in the back about to dive into this river in Amsterdam. I saw that. I didn't know if that was somebody like that was just there. I, I, I did see that. <laughs> <laughs> no, she photobombed our picture. <laughs> And she I couldn't like, tell that she was going to die. I'm going to be in this picture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> Do you feel that it's okay to be unhappy at times? Like, is that? Yeah, is that I totally normal? accept my unhappiness. I mean, that's part of it. I don't try to block it out. Listen, right. I'm, I'm as unhappy as the next guy. I've experienced the loss of people I love very much. I've experienced severe disappointment. And I, I accept that, and, mm -hmm. and I don't block it away. Because I, I like, just yeah, it. that's what I feel is like I a mean, problem with like sitcoms. Like they, they you know, it, it, sitcoms like just the whole scenario of them. Like you have to have everything solved in a half hour. You know, <laughs> you're right. all everything's fine at the end. Like you're supposed to always be happy. Yeah. They, they kind of like you know, they, they like if you're not if you're sad, they they teach, kind of like feels like something's wrong. You know, that, that, that's what's good about Seinfeld. It never worked out. <laughs> Seinfeld. <laughs> <laughs> That was one of the best. <laughs> that was one of the best. <laughs> you know, um, I, you guys probably heard of the artist Bill Withers. You know, incredibly soulful man. And sang those songs, um, Lean on Me, Ain't No Sunshine. Okay. I mean, that guy just gets the human condition. He was interviewed on NPR uh, about a year ago, and he was talking about his brother who used to work in the coal mine, loved the grittiness of being a coal miner, and then he got in this accident couldn't work, look, live in the coal mines anymore, so he became the happiest mailman he had ever seen. <laughs> and he said, I could never do that, because if I couldn't do what I loved, I would never be happy again. I would, can't block out the fact that I have unhappiness. And I'm thinking to myself, of course you, 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 you don't have to block it out. Right. You just accept it. Yeah. I mean, how do, how do blind people have a good life? How do people with one leg have a good life? How do people that have been fired from the job have a good life? You do, because that's part of what the complexity of life is. So if you accept those things and say, my life is different now, but that doesn't deprive me of the ability to be happy. I just accept the difference that I now have been given, yeah, and I move and on. Adapt to it, yes. I do. I love that um, one of the first reviews I read of your book said it's not – 
you're not trying to tell anybody something impossible to do. It's, it's your book. It's completely doable. What you're saying, like, and it's not oh, a yeah, drastic it, change. It's not like you have to make a no. drastic change in your life. You know, it's funny. I mean, a lot of these books are written by these scientists and psychologists and, <clears throat> and people that have incredible credentials. I'm just a dude. I'm just a guy who kind of figured out what works for me. And I was able to kind of put it in five barriers that stop me from being happy, 10 pathways that have worked for me to be happy. And then I include all these great suggestions based on a lot of the stories that I, that I talk about. And it's not hard to do. It's easy to do. It's just, a lot of it is common sense. You know, a lot of it is just kind of, I learned it in the school of hard knocks as opposed to going to study psychology at a university. Did you have a question, sir? Um, well, few, uh, you, you seem to take a, like a stoic uh, approach to life. Do you know what stoic? Tell me what you mean by stoic. Stoic, uh, stoic is in, like an ancient uh, Greek philosophy, which is basically just uh, learn to accept the things that you can't control. Like there are things yeah. in life that you can't control, and you that's, accept that. That's, um, that's similar to Tao, Taoism. And Taoism. I was gonna say, like yeah. with the water, like move with yeah, the yeah. the flow and yep. stuff like that. Yeah, I've seen that kind of a thing. Yeah. Oh I, yeah. And I was also. You know, uh, I I just want I was wondering uh, what your opinion of uh, mindfulness is, if you're familiar with that at all. Oh, very familiar with it. I have a, uh, an entire chapter on um, gratitude and presence and, you know, I, 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 and, and being present in the moment, you know, because the, the moment you're in is the most important moment that there is. And, you know, uh, Thich Nhat Hanh, who's a, a very big uh, Buddhist and uh, monk and an expert on mindfulness, you know, he said, every time you go to the present and recognize the condition of happiness that you have, happiness comes. And that's just so profound for me. I mean, just the recognition of the moment and the happiness that it brings, it just multiplies. It's a multiplier of happiness to have gratitude for that moment and to fully experience that moment. You know, and I learned a lot of that, you know, from, from my parents. I remember when I would go hiking with my mom and uh, my dad and my brother, all of a sudden my mom would stop and she'd say, okay, guys, bottle it. And I'm like, what? Bottle it. Bottle this moment. Bottle the smell of these pine trees. Bottle the view. <laughs> and I just, I, and bottle it kind of became code for us. It was code for like, just stop and experience this moment. That's cool. That's very cool. What, um, Mark, uh, where can everybody get your book? Well, it's available on Amazon, uh, so I, I encourage you to go check it out. You can go to my website, suitcaseofhappiness.com, and happiness is spelled H-A-P-P-Y-N-E-S-S. -E and as I mentioned, on my Twitter feed is at Mark Jaffe. I put out a tweet uh, every morning during the week, and, you know, I, it's just astounding to me. I have, like, 32,000 followers in just eight months, so it, it's obviously resonating and, and giving people a, a lot of joy and pleasure. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for talking to us. Oh, I really appreciate the, the ability to be on your show. Thank you guys so much. I had a lot of fun. Thank you. Have a great night. Take care of you as well. Take care, Mark. Cool. That was awesome. Like he's a regular dude. Like, yeah, he's not. Yeah. I like that. What do you got, Slambo? Oh, nothing. What's your moment of happiness? What do you uh, it's every day? Like something out of every day that you like that really like genuinely makes you happy. Oh, generally, yeah. I you know when I'm giving him a hand job. Oh you yeah. Know, I'm, you know. <laughs> Who? Yeah, you know that's that's the that's happiest, the best. That's the happiest place on earth. Yeah. <laughs> when he's throwing up Subway in the, in the parking lot. <laughs> no, like, that's really like what no, makes you yeah, happy. Really, um, I don't know, man. I, I you know what really makes me happy when I go is when I go fishing and I actually catch something. Yeah. And I got it like you know on the end of the hook and I'm bringing the fucker in. Yeah, you know? like. Just that that whole uh, fight or whatever yeah, the, 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 whole, the thrill of the hunt. Yeah, the thrill of the hunt. That's the thrill cool. Of the chase. And the boars, but yeah, that, that we've was... talked about that a lot. But that, that's yeah, cool. that was that was pretty exciting. As I remember, before we started this, like way before, I was talking to Carmine, getting a haircut, and he's I forget what he was saying, like how he plays uh, his guitar and all, and I'm like, yeah, I gotta do something. And he's like, yeah, you gotta do something. You could uh, you actually could show. 
Yeah. You can actually show that you did, you know, like video games are cool, but yeah, yeah. you got nothing to show after it. Yeah, so it then we did this. Cool. I was like, yeah, that was like one of the things like right before we started this. Not that that's why, but but it's true. You have to do something, I think, that mm. you have something to show yeah, 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 yeah. that you did something. Something that you produced. Yes. All right, guys. Not to make Slims break. happy. Right. He's fucking inconsolable. Right. All right, guys, we're going on break. We'll be back. <laughs>